Verse 16 says, Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. So he gives them basically 100% return on his investment there. So you gave me five, here's 10, right? Same guy, or the next guy, basically same thing. So he said, he, he congratulates this guy, he says, his Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over so, uh, many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath, and cast he the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And again, I'm not going to get into all this. If you want to know more about this parable, you could look up my sermon from Matthew 25 where I went into um, all of the, the meaning behind this and, and unprofitable servant and why is that guy going to hell and everything like that. Outside of the scope of my sermon uh, this morning, but I want to just point out and, and just start with this to show you that this is a parable about the kingdom of heaven. This is God is going to reward you at the judgment seat of Christ Okay, after you've lived your life, all saved people are going to stand before God and the work that you've done in this lifetime, any work that you've done, all the work that you've done is going to be laid up before God and God's going to determine what work that you've done was really valuable eternally speaking, what was valuable for him, what you did that was good for God, right? Because you could, you could spend your life doing all manner of work and be really busy your entire life but at the end of it, God's looking at this stuff going, you know, it was all vanity. And it doesn't even mean that you did anything sinful. You could, you could spend your, your, your whole life, you know, just working, going to work, working a job, working a job, and just doing that and, and you know, kind of keeping yourself relatively clean, you know, living a righteous life, maybe coming to church a little bit and doing some things. But overall... The vast majority of your time has just been spent doing nothing meaningful because you've just accumulated some physical wealth, some money on this earth, some treasures, riches, whatever. And all that stuff, the Bible says, is going to be, is going to be burned up. It's going to go away, which is why it's foolish to focus all of your life and soul and heart and energy into earning mo just money or just physical wealth because it's, it doesn't last long. It's going to be very short-lived, very temporary, whereas we need to be thinking eternally. We need to think the big picture. We need to think, hey, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of time to come. We need to get out of the mindset of the immediate gratification. Just, well, I just want this now, and I want to feel this good now, and I want whatever now, and who cares about the future, and who cares about what's going to happen? You know, people do this with the short-sightedness of many sins. Oh, I just want to have this relationship with this person right now, and it's an adulterous relationship, or it's fornication. Oh, I just want to have this now, and it's going to bring you bad consequences. Oh, I want to have, I want to feel good from this drug or from this alcohol now, and then it's destroying your body, it's destroying your life. It's causing you to get into, into other problems and have other sins in your life. All, so many things where people get real short-sighted, and they just focus on the immediate. It's going to bring, um, it's going to bring heartache in the end. We need to be thinking eternally, you know, and even things just with money, you know, it's, it's deceitful. The riches of this world are deceitful because they're not going to be around very long. You say, yeah, but I can have riches for 40, 50 years, whatever. What is that? That's not even a drop in the bucket compared to an eternity. I mean, seriously, I mean, think about that, right? People get so focused 
And maybe, maybe you've gone down this path. I don't know. In my career, different jobs I've held, you know, sometimes you'll get human resources come in and, and they'll get someone come in, do financial planning and, and kind of show you, hey, if you start investing now, if you start putting away money for a 401k or an IRA or whatever, you have all these different options. If you start putting away this much money now, that wealth is going to grow. And then by the time you're 60 or 65 or whatever, you'll have all of this money. You know, and they teach you how, you know, just by doing all this stuff, you could have all this wealth. And people say, oh, man, I want to get to this point earlier, and I could retire at 50 or 45, and then I could have all this money. You know. But that's only going to last for those short years, those short even decades, whatever it is. You know, If that's all we had to live for, if that's all life was, and there was no afterlife, then that would make the most sense. Just say, well, let's just live it up now and do what we can now and strive to make money now because there is nothing. But no, as believers, we know that that's not the end. We know that there's an eternity after that, that there's an entire afterlife that you're going to be living with God in everlasting life. And what you do here determines what you get for eternity. 